So freehold is divided into two, fee simple estate and then life estate. In this video, we're going to talk about life estate. So grab a notebook, grab something to write with, and let's jump in real quick. Hello, my name is Nonye, and I am your real estate tutoress. On this channel, I bring you the best tips and tools to getting your real estate license. I also answer any questions you may have about the process. If you're new here, welcome and do consider subscribing. In a previous video, we covered fee simple. So in this one, we're only going to cover life estate. And just as a recap, life estate is a type of freehold estate. And the freehold estate is a type of estate in land. With estate in land, we have freehold and leasehold. Freehold is ownership. Leasehold is rentals. So under freehold, which is ownership, we have fee simple estate. And I'll link a video at the end of this one where I talk about fee simple estate and these kinds of them. And then in this video, we're going to talk about the life estate and the types of life estate. For life estate, you own the property. However, you own it for the life of somebody. Meaning when that person passes away, your ownership ends. You can rent the property out. You can sell the property. You can live in the property. You can make upgrades to the property. However, when the person passes away whose life your ownership is dependent on, you, the ownership passes on from you to somebody else. So you could do it in such a way that you are the life tenant. And then when you pass on, your property goes to somebody else. So you could do that. Or you can gift the property to a family member and say, when that person passes away, that family member passes away, then you stipulate who gets the property after that. So with a life estate, it doesn't matter if the person has a will. This will override a will. Okay. If the person doesn't have a will, but they have a life estate in place, then this will, you know, come in and they can use this to pass their property on to whoever they choose to. So let's look at conventional. So there are three here under life estate. There's the conventional life estate, there's a legal life estate, and then there's this third one, which is a French word per ultra V, which means for another's life or for the life of another, for someone else's life. With the conventional life estate, this is when someone creates it either to happen during their lifetime or after they pass away. In a conventional life estate, it is stated up front who the life tenant is. The life tenant is a person whose life the ownership is dependent on. So I wanna show you an example here. Let's say that this is John and John used to be married to Mary, but now they're divorced, but Mary has custody of the two children. So John, even before he met Mary, he's been a real estate investor. And so he has multiple buildings. As part of the divorce proceedings, right? He decides to give this building to his ex-wife, Mary, so she can live there with her two, with their two children. So this is a three unit. She can live in one, rent out the others. She can choose not to even live here and rent out the others, but it's her building. Okay. And she is the life tenant. Okay. So life tenant now if mary passes away john has says if mary passes away the ownership goes to their two children so if mary is gone the two children take over all right now what does this do this protects the property and we know that this is something the kids are going to get at whatever age their mom passes away. 
Now, just giving examples, okay? Let's say the lady, Mary, marries again, right? Because this is a life estate, that spouse cannot get ownership of this building. So that's one reason why you could have a life estate in place. Even if Mary sells this property, it doesn't matter. Once Mary passes on, ownership goes to the children. Okay? So the question is, who would even buy a life estate when you know that you lose ownership? That's a very good question, right? I don't know if it happens, but at least you can sell it. If for any reason, you need to sell it. Okay? So this is an example of how you could see this played out in a conventional life estate. So that is our conventional life estate. Now, the next one we're going to cover is the per ultra V. Like I said, it is a French ter French term and it's for the life of another. Here, the life estate is for the life of someone who is not the life tenant. So let me show you what that could look like. How this could look is, let's say that um, there is a family, they're all adults now, and then they have an aging mother. So on this side, let's say this is Tom. Oh, that's a great T. All right, that's Tom. And this is Tom's brother, Tony. And this is mom. So Tom is the one who is doing really well for himself. Tony still lives with mom. He, uh, Tom came to visit them and notice that their living condition was just not ideal. So because Tom loves his mom so much, Tom went ahead and purchased a three unit building in Chicago and told and gave that building to Tony and said, hey, Tony, this building is yours. But when mom passes away, mom's life determines your ownership. So if mom passes away, ownership either returns to me or ownership goes to somebody else. Okay, so Tony is the life tenant. However, it's not for his life. It's for mom's life. Okay, so again, remember per ultra V for the life of another, for someone else's life. Let me give you another example. Let's say that there is another family and they have an aging mother as well. The family has a lot of real estate property, but they don't have a lot of liquid cash. And mom is aging and they want to put mom in a nursing home. Nursing home monthly fees are expensive. And so they're like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give one of our buildings to the nursing home the property becomes the 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 nursing home becomes the owner of this property and the property is fully rented out the rents that you get from the property is more than enough to cover mom's stay in that nursing home okay so the family says we're gonna give you this building you take the money that this building is going to generate and that money will be used to care for mom this building is yours as long as mom is alive so our the the premise here is that mom is going to live in this nursing home till she passes away so the family says this is your building take the proceeds from it you could sell it whatever whatever but it, when mom dies so mom is not the life tenant. The nursing home is the life tenant. So when mom dies, ownership either goes back to the family, ownership may go to somebody else, ownership may go to another nursing home that's getting for another family member, whatever. But mom's life is what the ownership is dependent on. And that's another example of per or true V. Okay, so back to this slide where we started. We have covered conventional, we've covered per ultra V. Now we're gonna look at legal life. These are things that have been set in place by the law. So this is not something that you and I can actually establish, but these are protections that are out there to protect 
individuals who own real estate. Homestead, Dower and Courtesy. Let's talk about Dower and Courtesy first. So Dower and Courtesy are the same thing. Dower protects the surviving wife while Courtesy protects the surviving husband. So let's say there's husband and wife, they live in the same home and the husband is the owner of the property on paper, right? He passes away. Now, because of dower in that state, the wife will not just get kicked out of the home. There is some protection for her. And then vice versa, if the wife was the owner and she passed away, the husband too will get some benefit because of courtesy. Okay. So dower is for the wife and courtesy is for the husband. In Illinois, we don't have this. Okay. So I'm going to put on here, not in Illinois. All right. This is a common law, but it's not used in Illinois. So know what it is. Know that we don't have it in Illinois. For homestead, homestead pr protects homeowners against unsecured creditors. So if two people or one person owns real estate and they have some judgment against them from the court and they need to sell their home to pay off the debts and things like that. Now, when the home is sold, the secured debts are paid off first. So remember when you talked about financing, secured debts are things like your mortgage, um, things that have collateral. So those will be paid first. Then the homeowner will be compensated. And once they're compensated, the rest of the money can then be used to pay off unsecured creditors, like your credit cards and things like that. All right? So for the homestead, for a single person, it is 15000 that would be given to them in Illinois. Okay, for single. And just make a note of this. And if they're married, it will be double that, so 30000 for married couples. All right. So let's say they sell your house. The cash was 300 grand. Your mortgage is 250. The mortgage is paid off first. If you're single and have no other secured loans, then you get 15,000. If it's married couples, they'll get 30,000. And then the remaining 50 grand will be used to pay off credit cards if they have up to 50,000 in credit cards. If they don't, then they get the rest of the money as well. And understand that there are two kinds of homestead. This one is for unsecured creditors. And then there's another one that actually gives um, spouses some sort of um, ownership claim to real estate, even if they're not an owner on paper. So don't confuse both. And then finally on this slide, remainder and reversion. We've kind of talked about this, but I didn't use the terms because I didn't want to confuse you. So we're going to go back to this slide. On the bottom here, when I was saying that John gave the property to Mary, and then Mary, when Mary passes, it goes to the children. The children are a remainder. Okay, D-E-R, all right. Children are a remainder. So they have a remainder interest in the property. So essentially they're waiting to get the property when she passes away. On the other hand, if John had said, okay, the property is yours when you pass away, it comes back to me. So on the top, it comes back to John. This is reversion, reverting, going back. So John, a reversion, S-I-O-N, -S okay? So John has a reversionary interest in this property, if that's the case. Okay? Now let's use this other example as well. Here I said, Tom gave the property to Tony. And then when mom passes, it comes back to Tom. So Tom again has a reversionary interest. But if Tom said, okay, Tony, I give this property to you. And then when mom passes, it goes to my daughter. I should have said son, cause it's short. Let's just do son. <laughs> S-O-N, okay? Just so I can write it up there. Now, this son has a remainder interest in the property. 
So as a recap, for a conventional life estate, there is an initial owner. In this case, the owner is John, okay? Then John gives the property to Mary and makes Mary the life tenant, okay? So Mary owns the property. Mary can do whatever she chooses to do with the property. However, in that same document when, where he's giving the property to Mary, he stipulates that upon Mary's death, the property goes to the children, okay? Per Archer V, for the life of someone other than the life tenant. So remember the examples I gave you for that one. Legal life estate, dower courtesy, okay, know what they are and know that we don't have them in Illinois. And then understand homestead as it protects homeowners against unsecured creditors. And then finally, remainder and reversion. So again, hopefully that was helpful to you and, you've, and you were able to learn some things and this was able to clarify certain things that you've seen in the book as you've been studying for the exam. Let me know in the comments if you have additional questions. Remember, take notes. All right, so that when you're going back to review, you're reviewing your notes, not necessarily reviewing the textbook again. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.